RSK, let it play, boy. You have one minute for four service stars, so get ready. Let's go. Did you hit the share button? Go ahead and hit it now. RSK, let it play, boy. I'm ready. Are you ready for service? WCYE Junior High. Let's make sure that you are liking, subscribing, and sharing before we get to this experience. Hopping, it's gonna be like no other. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? The experience is going to be crazy. Let's go.
What's up, WCYE Junior High? It's Jayla and Janae, and we're here to tell you that service starts every Sunday at 10 a.m. And make sure, make sure that you like and subscribe to WCYE Junior High Studios and hit the notification bell for notifications whenever a new video pops up. Did you hit that share button? Go ahead and hit it now. When they ask me how I did it, I say God taught me. When they ask me how I'm winning, I say God taught me. When they ask me why I'm different, I say God taught me. This my time to get it. God taught me. When they ask me how I did it, I say God taught me. When they ask me how I'm winning, I say God taught me. When they ask me why I'm different, I say God taught me. This my time to get it. God taught me. Never made a song that I do not like People always changing colors like a stoplight I'ma call you lefty cause I know you not right If you thought I was done you should learn from Saint Nick and check twice Ask me how I got here I say God brought me Ask me who this power from is gone on me Every step I'm taking I know God God taught me when they ask me why I'm different. I say, God taught me this my time to get it. God taught me when they ask me how I did it. I say, God taught me when they ask me how I'm winning. I say, God taught me when they ask me why I'm different. I say, God taught me this my time to get it. God taught me. See me in the way when I walk like this. Sauce like this. I'm a boss, I guess, God knows I'm blessed Go to the bank and I cash that check Guess what's next? I'll be the best Don't get confused, I'm reliable That's cause I always produce God chose me so I don't have to choose I can live out my dream Must be the shoes You don't want to work in anybody So you tiptoe You so focused on your balance Like you're a flamingo Enjoy your day Truth is out here, but it's hiding. So I make all of this music and they like it. Are you blowing smoke like it was cannabis? Why are you ignoring what the problem is? This year, let's come together, put a stop to this. Long with the revolution, God who thought, God who
we're back. This is Pastor Lasorel, the pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. Listen, I'm super excited because this is another level. We decided to switch it up a little bit because we wanted to make sure that we had some things under control. Okay, now this segment, this whole series that we're going to be rocking out for the next few weeks is about, drum roll please, how to have a dream parent. Yes, I said it. I know some of y'all are like, thank you, Jesus. Somebody came to my rescue, but this is what it's all about. We just want to make sure that for you, that relationship that is the most major relationship in your life, that it's really one that you're enjoying. And we want you to be able to tweak anything that you need in terms of your parents that love you so that you are getting along, right? I heard a little, you know, through the grapevine that some of y'all were having a little challenges. Some of y'all were going ham. Some of y'all were turning up at the house. So we want to make sure that all is well. So we decided to look at it from this perspective. How can you have a dream parent? This is that service where you get to really look at what you got, and also look at yourself in order to have the dream parent and relationship that you want. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for such a wonderful opportunity as this to be able to get together, Lord God, and Lord, that you would think so much of us as to make sure that we are well in our relationships. Thank you for the parent, guardian, grandma, grandpa, uncle, auntie relationship, Lord. Those who are in authority over us that you have put in place to watch over us. Every young person is watching here, Lord God. I ask that you open their heart and their mind to receive what is about to be said. Holy Spirit, lead God and direct. Heal in areas that need to be made whole. For those students that are watching, Lord God, or even those that are right here with us in the audience that need, Lord God, for their hearts to be whole. For those that feel like they're just not being heard or not being seen or not being understood, I ask you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit heal even as we share the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let's get into it. And like I said, this is about how to have a dream parent. Now, I got a few things that I want to talk about in the chat I want you talking to, but we really want to go ahead and rock and roll. So hello and welcome to Dream Parent Builder. There's a few components, just like when you're building a house, right? There's a few components that you got to have in order for any foundation to be strong in that right. So we want to really look at what does it take? What are those, you know, those founding things that in order for you to have the dream parent that you're thinking about, one that loves you, cares about you, rocks with you the whole time, gives you what you need, a lot of times what you want, right? But how do we do that? And I'm going to answer you by making sure the foundation is strong. So listen, the introduction to a dream parent is this. I want you to open up your heart, open up your mind, allow the Holy Spirit to really lead, guide, and direct you. And I want you to think about something. Think about things from a different perspective. Do you know at one point your parents weren't always parents? They were just like you. They were kids growing up, trying to find their way, trying to figure it out, just like you. You know, I tell sometimes, I tell young people sometimes, you know, maybe you need to give your parents a little break. Give them a break because I know it's hard because most of the time we look at our parents like, okay, they're supposed to know everything or they're supposed to be perfect. And if they make a mistake, oh my God. And so I want us to, you know, kind of change the perspective around a little bit and think about them from a fact of, from the fact of, you know what, just like you're a child of God, so are they. Just like they're parenting you, God is parenting them. Just like they're directing you and, and giving you instruction and training you, understand, God is doing the same thing for them. So I don't know if you ever heard about it or thought about it from that perspective, but I want you to start thinking differently because we're building what? A dream parent. Put that in the chat. I'm building a dream parent. I'm building a dream parent. I'm building a dream parent. Now, listen, it's on and popping. Before we move on, I want you to see this video. This young lady and her dad have a real good to great to struggle relationship. But I want you to use this as a guide so that it begins to change your perspective on your parents, the role of a parent the purpose of a parent. Why did God give me a parent? These are the things that we're talking about. 
right, in this series. But I love this video because it really kind of shared the whole concept of one of the points of God, which is your parents are not always going to be there. And our job as parents is to make sure that you're ready. So the whole, one of the goals that God has, I believe, is that, you know, right now you're in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you're going to get older, and you hear your parents' voice training you, talking to you over and over with instructions. But what's supposed to happen is this. You're supposed to begin to transfer from hearing your parents' voice when they're no longer there with you to hearing God's voice. You've practiced so much in hearing God's voice that the familiarity may sound like them, but it's really God saying, no, don't do this. Hey, make this decision. Hey, do this, do that. And that is the goal. We're going to talk about a few things. So listen, this video is going to be amazing. I want you to start changing your perspective on what parents do and why God has given them the job of parents and not you. Let's go. Let's watch this just a moment. Everybody has a hero. Okay. Come on. Mine's my dad. Yes, I get it. Since mom died, Go. it's only been us. He has a way of filling my life with color. Dad, which one? That one. Sometimes I don't understand his advice, but I trust him. And what always brought us together <laughs> was our love for running. One day, I'll be faster than him. And when I am, I'm going to win every marathon in the world. Abby? What's wrong, champ? Or at least that was my plan. I'm losing my sight. And real quick, read to me the lowest level that you can see on there. What is called is interocular melanoma. Eye cancer. Unfortunately, you will lose your vision. That was the day my father disappeared. Okay. Come on. Dad! Winky wakey. Ready to run, champ? Come on. I thought he would always be there for me. I guess I was wrong. Dad, where are you? You abandoned me. Where are you, Dad? Where did you go? Do you not love me anymore? Am I still beautiful? Are you no longer proud of me? How could you leave me when I need you the most? Dad? Dad? Dad, why did you leave me? Abby thinks I've left her. And as much as it pains me to hear that, she's right. I've left her. The best that we can do is can save the please? actual eye so that cosmetically she doesn't lose them. That's my girl. I understand. That's my girl. That's my little girl. There's support groups, and I know this is a very difficult time. No! I've left her to realize she's more courageous than she ever imagined. I've left her to discover how beautiful she is from the inside out. I've left her to challenge herself in ways she never considered. I've left her to discover how strong she really is. Me, baby. Why did you leave me? I was right here. I was always here. Where did you go? 
I was always here, baby. Listen, no one believes in you more than I do. You know that. Think about how far you've come. Don't you, baby? Yeah. My dad says he gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. You ready? Yep. Folks, what we are seeing here is amazing. This is a testament of true love. Love is allowing mother. someone to see their true worth and beauty. I used to think my dreams were over. I thought I'd never run again. And even though I can't see my dad, I know he's guiding me the entire way. In the moments where you go and notice In the ordinary day to day Countless miracles of life around us Point like arrows to your name Let our voices rise All creation cries Sing out in endless Hallelujah From this moment on Join with heaven's song Wasn't that amazing? I hope that you were able to really grasp what I was saying. Did you notice that even after the time occurred where she lost her sight, there was still a regroup and she had to get herself together. She had to stop blaming what dad and she had to recall, excuse me, recall her training. She had to recall her training. She had to recall what her dad taught her a while ago. And then she had to combine that thing with God speaking to her spirit. You know, this is so important for you to understand. You're in the sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, but you're not too young to understand that God speaks to you. You're not too young to understand that in combination with your parents and God, you're going to be on the right track. So let's talk about that foundation. What are the four top things that need to happen as you are building your dream parent? Well, let's look at this slide. You see there it says emotional. How do you want to get along with your parents? How do you want it to be where you connect with them? Some of you said when we were in service, you said, uh, Miss Alyssa, I really would like for my parents to understand me, to be supportive of me. I want to be able to have parents that I can just say whatever to them. I could just walk into their room and just start talking and they get me, not reject me, not always trying to correct me. Well, I don't know about the last one, if that's always going to happen, but you said that that's what you wanted. And there's a way to have it all financially. Now, some of y'all told me, hey, I want them to be able to buy me all the sneakers that I need, all the clothes that I need, and I get it. But I want you to start thinking about the financial requirement of a dream parent and you definitely want to start out with, I'd like them to be able to feed me, clothe me, put clothes on my back, a house over my head, right? And you know, this starts with being grateful for where you are right now, grateful for what you have right now. Because as a parent, when we see that you are grateful, man, it opens us up to hear God on how to bless you even more. So you get to the place of beyond just what you need and over to what you want. That's where we want to go when it comes to financial. But we want them to be able to hear from God on how to grow the seed or the money that they have. If they always argue with you about wasting their money, they can't hear from God on how to get more. So keep that in mind. The other thing is thinking. Your parents need to be thinking just like God. That's a full prayer. That's a whole word all by itself. 
But I want you to understand they're supposed to be thinking or their thinking is supposed to line up with God. And you know what? Sometimes I believe you guys think that they're supposed to think what you want them to think or believe what you want them to believe. But literally, God has a specific plan and a specific job on how he wants them to operate. And I need you to know your parents have a specific job. Listen, and also the spiritual. Now, you've heard us say this before, but if this is your first time here, you may not have heard us say who we really are. We're a three-part being. We are a spirit. We possess a soul, and we live in a body. So our real person, our real being is that we're a spirit, just like God. So hear me when I tell you, we want our parents to be connecting with God so that they can hear exactly what he has for you and move in that direction. So when we're talking about building a dream parent, we're talking about making sure we have those components in place, emotional requirements, because you want to be able to have a parent that you can talk to, walk with, share with at any time. You want to be able to have a parent whose finances are in place so that not only can you get the basics because you're grateful, but then you want them to be able to be open to God so that they can increase so that you can get what you want. Listen, the other part was thinking. You want your parents to be thinking just like God. You want your parents to be thinking just like God. And that's that on that. Last part is we're talking about building a dream parent. The foundational piece that needs to go in, man, is that spiritual requirement for parents. Our parents, what we say, are a spirit. They possess a soul and they live in a body. Well, they're just like God. And we want their spirit man to be connecting with God. We want their spirit man to be connecting with God. We want them to be connecting with the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, direct, correct, and whatever is necessary to get you to your destination. Believe it or not, that's how you're building the foundation for your dream parent. I'm telling you, let's look at this. What is the whole point and purpose of a parent? Well, we're going to be discussing play by play, point by point, job description by job description, line upon line as to what it is. Not what I'm saying is the point and purpose of a parent, but what God says is the point and purpose of a parent. It's important that you understand. So many times I've heard this and it seems it deems to be true. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will abuse it. Put that in the chat. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will abuse it. Mm -hmm. I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. So we want to dig in over these next few weeks. What is the purpose and point of a parent? So let's start out with this one because they've got a job to do. Put that in the, in the chat. My parents have a job to do. And I want you to start changing your perspective, thinking that, you know what, they're just bossing you around or they're just trying to tell you what to do. No. God has asked them to do a specific job and he's asked them to do it a specific way. I'm going to say it again. God has asked them to do a specific job and he's asked them to do it a specific way. So listen, let's look at this scripture. I wanted to jump right in to, let's call it the job description of a parent so we can get to the point and purpose of a parent so that you don't abuse it and you don't disregard what they're trying to do. You'll stop thinking that they're coming for you and you'll understand that they're for you. So this first scripture is Ephesians 6 verse 4 and I'm reading in the ESV. It says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but, and see that but is in the red, because there's an addition to, there's an, another level of understanding that God has for parents. He says, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. You know, I love when God breaks things down in two. He separates them, so he lets them know, I'm not playing with you. Listen, he said, I said, discipline and instruction. Discipline and instruction. That means he has two specific tasks on his mind. He says, not only are you disciplining, but you're giving the information so that they'll know what to do. Discipline means that you're consistently the same in front of them and helping them to be the same too. Let's look at this other scripture and I'll give you a second to get there. I know I'm going a little fast because I'm getting excited about you understanding and learning because I know once you understand 
that your relationship with your parents is going to be a whole lot better going on. Listen, turn with me to Hebrews 12, 11 through 13. Now, I'm reading it in the Passion Translation, but you can read it in whatever translation suits you. But I love this one because it seems to break it down. Are you there yet? I'll give you a second. Hebrews 12, 11 to 13. And it reads as such. It says, now all discipline seems to be painful at the time. Somebody put in the chat at the time, at the time, at the time. Yet later it will produce transformation of character. That means you are in a transformative state. That means there's supposed to be some changing going on. Hmm? And it's transforming and changing so that your character is in place. And what is character? Character is doing what's right because it's right, knowing what's right, and doing it right too, even when no one is looking. That's going to be the key kicker right there. Even when no one is looking, your character says who you are and who you'll be and how you respond. And so the Lord is saying in the scripture, with discipline and instruction, man, that character is going to be on point and it'll never go wrong. The other thing it says is bringing a harvest of righteousness, which means it's going to keep putting you in a position to be abundantly blessed so that you can stay in right standing with God. You're not going to miss. You're not going to miss. Put that in the chart. I'm not going to miss. Put that in the chat. I'm not going to miss. 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 We're talking about building a dream parent, and these are the things that you need to know, my friend. We've got two so far. We're about to get to this third one. This third one is going to set you free. Now, how many of you can say, Miss Alyssa, you don't know my mama. She always be going in. She's always hollering. She's always screaming. She's always coming for me. Listen, you need some peace. Would you agree? Put that in the chat if you say, I need peace, I need peace, I need peace. Well, I'm about to tell you how to get peace. Listen, it says it comes from the discipline that your parents are supposed to give you. Because here's the three things. It says transformation of character, doing what's right because it's right even when no one's listening. Bringing a harvest of righteousness, which is what? Putting you in position to be in right standing with God and peace and peace. So that's one of the gifts. That's one of the promises from discipline, right? Even though it says now all discipline seems to be painful at the time. Listen to me. If you let that thing happen or say it like the scripture says, it says, and yield to it. Those who yield to it, those who let it happen. Those who put them in a put themselves in a position to receive. Discipline. I'm going to say it again. It says, now all discipline seems to be painful at the time. Yet later, it will produce transformation of character. A harvest of righteousness, which means you're going to be in right standing with God. Nobody can take that away. Nobody can turn that around. Nobody can take that away. Nobody can turn that around. But it, look what it comes from. Discipline discipline and instruction. You know, I told you before, God separated the two, the discipline and instruction. It's a big deal. Instruction is that line upon line. Hey, do it like this, son. Do it like this daughter. Here's what you need to know. Or Hey, here's some more information so that you are on the right track. Here's what I want you to stop doing. I want you to stop tripping so hard, getting so mad, getting so agitated all the time when they're trying to give you information, when they're trying to instruct you. I want you to start thinking differently and saying, wait a minute, they're just doing their job. Hmm? I want you to start thinking differently and saying, they're just doing their job. Your parents have a God appointed job that they gotta do. Let them do their job. Put that in the chat. Let me let my parents do their job. Let me let my parents do their job. Now, here's the other thing. Don't make it hard for them to do their job. I'm going to pause on that. Don't make it hard for them to do their job. When they're instructing you, are you that kid that's like you take forever to follow through? Are you that kid when they ask you to do your chores, you might get to it within the next three hours? Are you kidding me? 
Listen, when they're disciplining you to do it right away, it's because they understand that later on as you grow and as you mature, God is going to ask you to do things right away that will bring things to your benefit. But you know what? That doesn't just happen. It doesn't come out of nowhere, but it comes from practice, discipline, instruction. Don't make it hard. Remember what the scripture said? It said it will come when you allow discipline, you yield to it. That means when you see a yield sign, right? When you see a yield sign, a traffic sign, that means you slow down. And even though other things may be in play, you slow down. You still look around. You may have to allow other traffic to come through, even though you might have got there first. You might be right, right? But you yield to, you let what's happening happen because you understand it's for your safety. Man, that's good. You yield to it, right? You yield to that stop sign. And those of you that don't drive, that's what we're doing. When you see your parents yield to that yellow triangle, because we understand it's for our safety. We may have been the first one at the traffic light, but we may be the right one, the first one to be able to make that turn, but we understand that there's other things going on, other mindsets happening, other situations occurring, that if we went out ahead before our time, man, that'd be a crash and burn. We don't want you to crash and burn. Put that in the chat, no crash and burn, no crash and burn, no crash and burn, my friend. So you gotta understand, God is thinking about you. And when he put that parent in place, when he put that grandma, that grandpa, that uncle, that aunt, whoever it is, like we said, that's responsible for raising your wonderful you, he thought about you ahead of time. Don't make it hard for your parents to do your job. Don't make it hard for your parents to do their job. Listen, we're going to be talking week by week on exactly what the role and job of a parent is so that you can understand, so you can be easy, let it happen, and you can gain the benefit of having that dream parent that you really want. This is Alyssa Orell, the pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. Listen, I love you so much. Oh, and guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I love you so much, and I'll see you next time. That word was so good. Listen, you heard the word, and maybe you need to make a decision. The Jesus that I'm talking about, the one that set it up to where he gave you parents or those in authority, right, that would help you, lead you, guide you on the path that you should go. I want to make sure that you have a relationship with him, that you know him for yourself. I want to give you the opportunity to get born again. And it comes by just doing a simple prayer. Would you bow your head with me and pray this prayer now? Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord, and my Savior. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. I know that your body was broken, so I don't have to be broken. I know that your blood was shed so that I can be forgiven of my sins, past, present, and future. Thank you so much for saving me. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to say welcome to the family. And I'd like you to do one more thing. I want you to text, I am saved, I am S-A-V-E-D, to 51555. We'll put that in the chat. And we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to get some information to keep you on track, right? This gift of salvation is so powerful. And the first decision is that you receive Jesus. The second part is that you have to continue to learn, to continue to have discipline and instruction, even from God himself. So you want to put a special gift in your hands. I want to send it to you so that you'll know exactly what to do. Listen, this is Alyssa Orell, the pastor with the blue hair, because we really do care. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Andrew, and we're going to be doing communion. Well, today I'm going to be talking about how the bread represents God's flesh that was broken and that is blood that was shed for all of us and for all our sins. Well, can you pray with me? Father God, I pray for everybody that's having a bad day and make it better. And I pray that everybody gets the message and how uh, they realize that God has shed, I mean, shed his blood and his body was broken 
and how he fixed all our sins. Now, let's eat. Hi guys, I'm Carson, and today we're going to be talking about offering and what offering means to me. What it means to me is us not giving because we have to, but giving because we want to, and we're going to show our appreciation to what the Lord has done for us. And if you're ready to give, go to one of these options below, and if you're not, it's fine, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.